got mud on your pants. <laughs> yeah, it was a good day, sign of a good day. With struggles the last couple of years, did did you ever wonder if it was you? <laughs> you know, like like yeah. your your ability versus like the bike or anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I think it was really hard to put our finger on it because first year at Intense, we had the M29. That bike was pretty solid, but it was a full 29er, which I had never really raced besides like the last race at YT. Um, and I did decent, but some of the things on that bike, I was like, whoa, we're gonna have to figure that out for next year. So that was a big change. Um, and then the sizing of those two bikes, the large and the XL on that, I was like dead in the middle of those two. And there was a big size gap between the two. So we were kept going back and forth between the large and the extra large because it's like, dude, I mean, 10 mil of reach for me makes a huge difference. So if I'm 10 mil off too small or 10 mil too big, like I can still ride the bike good, but it's not what I need. So I, I podiumed on that bike um, and it felt pretty good. Like I think that if I wouldn't have got hurt that year, like I think I still could have won races on that and been on the podium more, um, but I got hurt in the middle of that season missed a lot of races and then we were like well let's just get the proto stage going um, and that bike was kind of pieced together but it was more an experiment on do we want to go with the staggered wheel size and we did a little bit of testing and the answer was yes so then year two we had the prototype ready to go we were testing it got it ready just in time for the season and then COVID hit and so we didn't race until the very end of the year we had one month of racing and they were probably the muddiest gnarliest races I've like ever done <laughs> so it was just really hard to get a gauge on the bike like where we were at um, and then last year came into the season strong again had like a super muddy first couple of races um, but that's I think last year is really where I started to kind of question what was going on a little bit because I've ridden in the mud great throughout my career for I mean I'm not a mud specialist but I've won some pretty muddy races and I'm just, I'd noticed the mistakes were really stacking up. I was having a really hard time riding consistent. Um, when we started coming out to different tracks and even in California and stuff, it was like, I don't know. Like I just was starting to wonder what was up because I knew the amount of effort I was putting in to go fast. And usually when I put that amount of effort in and I do the things I do, the time is pretty good. And the times just were not that good. But there were so many other factors with weather and weird situations like, and, uh, France the second World Cup I did last year it started raining for the last half of us so I think like out of the last 20 guys down the hill or something I was like fourth or fifth fastest so I was like I was a little bit off the back but I was in the mix for those conditions and so every race just had something weird happening whereas like well I don't know maybe it was just this factor it was really hard to put our finger on it so I think it was national champs last year that was kind of the, the big like final straw so to speak for me like that was a dry track I would usually crush it at I felt really good and I was looking at the times and how much I was struggling and I was like this doesn't make sense like I'm I should be going much faster than this on the clock like something is just really not <laughs> not happening um and when we get it to the rough tracks that bike was just it was a really fun bike to ride really turned well did a lot of things great but for a world cup race bike there was just certain things it did that were pretty unpredictable and i was really having a hard time holding on to it um and so yeah those doubts start to creep in because i'm i'm always like one that wants to point the finger at myself um before the equipment and the bike and all that kind of stuff and because we had had so many weird like weather races and stuff i'm like dude maybe i just I need to get better in the mud or I need to whatever, you know, and I think there is a little truth to some of that, which is why we're kind of moving out here and making some changes. Um, but I just wanted to give myself every opportunity to succeed before I really point the finger at the bike. And like I said, with the seasons being so weird and having injuries and stuff, I didn't really have anything to compare it to. So when you're on the limit and you're getting a little squirrely, that's, that kind of feels the same. So I was like, man, I, I'd started to feel like I was getting a little bit lost, to be honest, with where I was at. Um, and so thankfully I talked to Intense and I was like, guys, like I, I kind of got to know, like I need some other stuff to ride to see like, is it me or is it the bike or like what level of combination is it? Um, and I really wanted to kind of go a direction and Jeff was like, let's do it. Like, you know, we'll, we'll take whatever information comes, you know, if we figure out some really good stuff and we've got to really rethink some things, then, then great you know we're, we're all in um, 
so we had some other bikes to baseline, started doing some comparison testing, and it was kind of pretty obvious to me really fast what the issue was, um, which was both a bummer for us, but also super exciting because I felt like I just like was like, okay, I just need what I need to go fast again and we can make it happen. So um, yeah, that's really what started it. And, and Jeff just being so willing to like, kind of, like I said, clean the slate, like, and start over and really take a methodical approach to where we want to go next. So I feel like for me, the joy is really coming back into riding downhill. Um, I'm starting to do and feel things that I kind of haven't for a few years and um, a level of comfortability and everything that I haven't had for a while. So obviously, you know, winning a World Cup and going over there to France in a few weeks and actually making it happen is a whole nother deal. But I feel like we're just in a much better spot with the equipment and kind of where we can go through the season as we progress than we were. So I'm, I'm fired up, man. I'm excited. Tell us about this whip next to the 450s going to roost Got the ripping, got the trash truck slamming dumpsters around. <laughs> Basically a culmination of the last, I don't know, six months, I'd say, of a lot of work, a lot of rethinking kind of what we were going after and all that. Um, we just got them the other day, kind of, obviously it would have been nice to have them a little earlier, but when you're kind of designing a completely new bike from the ground up, it, you know, in whatever it's been, less than six months, I think, it, it's actually gone together pretty well. This is like pretty much the old bike had nothing to do with this. We just basically started all completely over again um, and just kind of started learning like one step at a time and really tried to figure out like what works and why does it work and what do we want, what are we looking for, what's like the best overall way to do this. Um, with no timelines as far as like we got to make this for production or it needs to look like this or it needs to it was just whatever we want to build we could do it um so that process was really fun it was really encouraging for me to to get on some different stuff and kind of really see because bikes have changed so much the last three years like they went from 275 to 29 to staggered wheel size and you got high pivots and other pulleys and all these different designs so it was kind of for us, a really fun opportunity to be able to just ride everything and really see what works and what doesn't and pros and cons of each bike and all that kind of stuff. And so during that time, Jeff had a couple ideas in his head of kind of where he wanted to go. Um, and it happened to line up real good with our feedback and kind of what we were thinking. And so this bike basically was in the works then. We had another prototype that the three of us have been riding for a bit now that was kind of a, we call it the Franken bike. It's kind of it was more pieced together. Um, functionally pretty similar, but um, this definitely has a lot more details and stuff than what we were riding the last month or two. Um, so it was good to get on that and really do a lot of testing on that style of bike, kind of this more high pivot style of bike um, and kind of dive a little bit deeper so that when we got this race bike, we felt like we were pretty close to being able to, to nail it or at least get really close on the first prototype and not, you know, be in this big process. So um, this thing is going to be an ongoing process. Jeff is like, basically, he likes to say we have a uh, learn it all attitude, not a know it all attitude. And he just wants to learn and progress it. And whenever it's ready, it'll be ready. And we're just going to keep making it better and better. Um, I'm really happy Dakota and I are really stoked and Seth with the first few days on it. Um, obviously it's only a few days and you know it's been a little muddy today so it's hard to like really get the bike working through travel like on a really rough track but um, so far it seems like the gnarlier the track gets the bike just gets better and better so it's um, it's been fun man it's been very uh, Dakota and I were talking about it the other day um, we were riding first day testing we we're like man like i haven't had this much fun on a bike for a while like it allows you to do stuff that you feel like you know it starts to separate you from other people with being able to hit things really hard or i do certain lines and just be comfortable at speed which i just honestly haven't been for a few years um so yeah dude it's been a, a big learning process a big uh complete overhaul and obviously for intense like there's just there's no egos, there's no nothing. Like, and we have like the full support of the whole company now to basically go after this downhill project. Um, they've really done a lot of good stuff with the rest of the company now and everything's running smooth. Got through COVID and all that stuff. So now we kind of have the time, the resource to really focus on the downhill bike. 
Um, and I don't think I've seen Jeff like so fired up on anything like <laughs> ever. Like he's so stoked texting me all the time, sending me photos. So it's been, uh, it's been really fun, man. And we're just going at it as a team. Um, you know, obviously we got him a little late, but really with the turnaround to like, what do we want to do? Let's start over. Not just being a few months ago to having a race bike ready to go for the first race. I, I think we actually turned it around pretty quick. Was there a specific feeling you were after with how the bike worked? Yeah, so I think um, it's pretty interesting because through all of our baseline testing, you really you see the strengths and the weaknesses of each bike. And our goal after riding them was, I felt like we could find a way to kind of pull the strengths from the different designs and the different bikes and try to limit the weaknesses that each one had. Um, there's some really strong bikes in there, but each one still had things that did that we, Nico and I were both like, ah, man, like it's great except for this one thing or maybe if we could just do this or do that and trying to figure out like how do we put all that into one bike so that was really the goal with this bike was to build something that um, is just like an absolute monster truck when you get to those big tracks and you want to just hammer into things full speed um, but then not have it just be such a huge you know plow bike in a straight line that it doesn't turn it doesn't pump it doesn't pedal you know great or whatever so trying to just find something that's very well-rounded, like fairly simple to set up, um, easy to tune, like nothing crazy one way or the other, and just a really good all-around bike was kind of what we were going for. So I think we learned a few things through the process with the Geo and the kinematics that were really exciting to us, um, that we've been able to kind of start putting into this bike. And I think it's, um, it's very, it's a very, good feeling bike i guess i'll say i don't i can't talk too much into like some of those specifics but um i think we're accomplishing a lot of our goals and we're just kind of getting started like this will be an ongoing process that'll go through the season that's why it's not painted it's not like we're totally this will be an ongoing deal that's going to keep progressing throughout the year um and we're just going to make it as good as we can so and then we might have some other stuff we're working on to line it up against as well so we're we're just in full test R&D mode, enjoying that process, and uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Cool. Have you had to adapt your riding style to the high pivot compared to what you were used to? Um, no, not really. Honestly, I didn't feel like I could really ride the style that I wanted to ride on the other bike. Um, I rode really tight and just kind of timid, and I didn't have a lot of trust in certain things that was doing. Um, so this thing compared to that to be able to dial in and get comfortable is like it, it's not like you need weeks and weeks of testing to get comfortable on it it's like first run you're like okay this feels like it bike should feel so um we did like i said a lot of background work before we made this um so i was pretty confident that the first one it might not be perfect but it's going to be really good and a whole lot better than kind of where we were um and so, yeah, we've been really happy with it so far. Do the bikes differ between you and Seth and Dak? Yeah, so each one, um, I think me, Seth, and Dakota are pretty much on the same bike because we're almost all the same height and we kind of have very similar preferences. Um, Joe's a little taller and likes some different things, so the Geo on his bike's different than ours. Um, but each, each one, basically, as we test, if any rider has, like, oh, I'd like it to be a little bit more this or that for each rider, each one we can We'll tweak it to basically fit whatever the guys want so um dakota and i are actually pretty similar he runs his setup a little different as far as like mostly the cockpit setup um but as far as suspension tune and kind of the range we're in we weigh pretty similar amounts and we have a very similar setup in a lot of ways um so that's been good sets sets just a grom still so he doesn't really <laughs> care what he's on he'll shred whatever <laughs> so we're trying to kind of like uh kind of get him into testing and kind of like that like being able to tell what the bike's doing how it's reacting and, and what changes he might want to make specifically for him um, and he is getting a lot better but he he rips on whatever so he's just uh, more really excited to be on this bike now I think he's been scratching his head a little bit so getting on this is I could see him today just all fired up so that's been cool um, so yeah, every bike will be able to kind of tune into each rider a little bit as far as Geo goes, you know, if they want a little different reach or something like that. I mean, from your one vlog, it sounded like the, the change to V tires is going pretty well. Yeah, man. Still feeling that out here? Yeah, for sure. Um, it was a bit of a, a last minute sort of thing. Um, actually, Joel at E13 
thanks Joel for hooking me up. He hit me up, we were pretty late in contract negotiations, we were trying some different tires out, um, testing some different things, trying to kind of figure out where we wanted to go um, with that, and he was like, hey, would you be up for a chat with those guys? And I, I honestly didn't know much about them, so I was like, yeah, like, you know, you never know, because a lot of times I really like working with brands that are kind of on the they're kind of up and coming you know they're they're hungry they want to like make a, a big splash into it and if the guys are motivated and they have the R&D team and the engineers that are really want to get stuff done I it's just very fulfilling for me you know it's like I've signed with brands in the past that pretty much had almost never raced a World Cup before and to be able to like get in there and get them results it's it's just really fun for me it's like um, I don't know on like a different level than you know so I, I think there's obviously a lot more risk the way I go about it than most uh, you know probably a lot of riders that only want to sign with brands that have won and they need to make sure that the bike's gonna be perfect from day one like for me like I don't know there's just more that comes into it you know I kind of like that sort of underdog story and being a part of it being able to be a part of a brand's new success and some of those challenges um, and so yeah anyways when V came along you know I was a little hesitant because honestly I didn't know a whole lot um, about the tires or anything that was up with them and so I was like sure like tell them to send the tires I need to get on them and get testing because nothing else matters if I don't like the tires so they sent them out we started testing um, I was very pleasantly surprised and then I jumped on the phone with Bike and some of those guys over there the main dudes and just kind of heard their passion for where they're going and where these most recent tires came from um it was i was blown away like i was like you know i kind of knew what it was going to maybe look like <laughs> to people like jump into another tire brand that's not one of like the big two um but for me i i really liked them and i feel like they had everything we needed to make it happen and, and i like that from the owner himself he is passionate like sending you texts and messages about tires and like he's directly involved and there's nothing to do with like a marketing team or any of these holdups it's like straight to the top that guy wants to make the best tires now so um that's been cool and we've been able to do it i mean we've got a mud tire coming and a few other things and the turnaround that they've done on those tires is like insane how fast they've been able to do them how fast we'll be able to tweak them so um it is going to be an ongoing process obviously we have what we have um i've been really happy with them so far i think this snap to five tires specifically has been I, I feel like it's gonna be pretty hard to beat like for us to make something better for that type of a tire um, but those guys are like in the same boat kind of like how we are at intense like we gotta whatever it takes you know like so there'll be a bit of a testing process that's gonna on go through the year um, and we want to make the best tires so we're kind of starting at the bottom and we're just gonna keep going but I feel like with what we have, especially these two tires, the Snap and the Attack tire, they're both like ready to, for a World Cup right now. The casing, the rubber, everything about them been great. Um, Dakota, same thing. We were both like, dude, like these things are good. So we've been really happy with that. Um, so yeah, man, I feel like equipment, we've made a couple of gains um, with TRP, with certain things, with uh, brake setups, derailers. Like I, I feel like all of our stuff is really solid now. We don't really have any thing that's given us issues um all the sponsors have been great and i feel like we're we're ready to go racing have you been following any of the comments online or anything yeah a little bit like i'm kind of in and out on those sometimes i do i'm more just curious like where people are at. i don't really get offended i kind of understand like from an outsider's perspective when you're not in in on what's actually happening i do laugh because people say things with such like authority like oh this is what's that or this or that and i read it and i'm like dude you're way off <laughs> like, you have no idea um but i mean if you're not on the inside that's it's easy to develop those opinions so i think with jeff it more speaks to his character like that dude just loves bikes and making cool stuff um and sometimes you try stuff and it doesn't work and sometimes you you really nail it so i think you know i understand we've been on a prototype bike for a few years now and it hasn't been working and so to be on a prototype still and to be starting over or whatever to some people it's like you know i see i see what that looks like um but for us being involved it's been um it's just been a fun like we're in a learning process now and we're we're just in a much different place this year than we were last year as far as what we can do and 
kind of the support we have and the resources and everything to kind of go all in on this. So to me, it feels like day one, like this is a whole different project, whole different level of seriousness and attention and commitment being put into it now. Um, and I'm, I mean, I, it's a little bit longer of a road to take, I guess, but for me, if I could have my ideal setup as a rider to be able to like test so much stuff and really figure out why each thing works the way it does and like have the time to basically build something for the ground up, it's kind of the ideal situation. So um, I'm really happy with it. I'm really thankful to Jeff and the whole team at Intense for kind of trusting me like so much to basically like scrap everything and start over. Um, and so now it's just time to get this thing dialed in and get the results.